Well, good morning. Today is, is May 4th, and it is our 31st day of at-home schooling, distance learning, and I wanted to show you the garden. So we started squash and tomatoes a little while ago. You can see the tomatoes are getting really big. I'm gonna thin them out a little. This one is one plant. Yeah, they're all one plant. And our squash, it gets to be a big plant really quick. Look how big these are. They're doing really well. It's still not too late to plant some of your own vegetables. So if you can, I suggest you plant some seeds. And if you don't have seeds, all you need is a tomato or a pumpkin or a squash from the store. You can take the seeds out of them and plant them in the ground. I'd love to see how it goes for you. Today is also, or the beginning of, Teacher Appreciation Week. Now normally we have all kinds of cool stuff that we bring to school for our teachers, and that's just not possible. So I've come up with a list of things that you can choose to do for your Preppy K teachers. Today is Monday, and we always write a letter to our teachers on Monday. So I figured today we'll keep it simple, and today we'll write a letter. Tell your teacher what you like about them. That would be great for Teacher Appreciation Day. Tuesday, now we always bring in a bunch of flowers for our teachers on Teacher Appreciation Week, but how about we send them a picture of a flower in your yard or your neighborhood. If your teacher got 30 pictures of different flowers, it would make them so happy. On Wednesday, we have Sing the ABC Song. Why don't you show your teacher something you've learned at school this year? Sing the ABC Song is a pretty easy way to do that, and it's a short video you can send your teacher. Thursday, a drawing. Do your very best drawing of something and send it in. I know you like to make drawings and bring them into school to give to the teacher. Well, now you're gonna have to take a picture of your favorite drawing and send it to your teacher. And on Friday, at the end, we usually bring some kind of really yummy food for the teacher. But once again, we can't bring food into the classroom for the teacher. So why don't you and mommy think of your favorite thing to cook and send your teacher the recipe? then they can cook it on their own. We can still do Teacher Appreci Appreciation Week even though we're not in school. If you don't want to do these ideas, try to do something every single day for your teacher just to let them know that they're special and you appreciate them. Well, we have a new letter of the week. And so let me show you what it is. We have our smiley face that tells us how we begin. We're going to start at the top underneath that, and we're going to do a diagonal, but we're going to stop the diagonal at the dotted line. So we're going to go like this. And then we're going to lift our pencil or pen or whatever we're writing with. We're going to bring it over to the other side, and this time we're going to make a diagonal, but we're going to go all the way down to the bottom. So here we go. What letter did we make? We made a Y. And a Y is kind of like an X, only we don't do this part right here. So we're going to go down halfway at a diagonal, lift, and go down all the way on the diagonal. Now you can see here that I kind of crossed that. That happens. Let's try and make sure that, that with practice we don't do it though. You want the second line to come right over the end of the first line. And this is how you make a capital Y. Now guys, you do not go past the bottom line on this one. This is definitely, I'm gonna erase that, my X. I'll turn that into a Y. This is something you definitely wanna keep above the bottom line. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now this is the month of May, so I'm gonna make nine capital letters because that's our number of the month. So there's eight, I'm gonna go diagonal to the halfway point, lift my pen, and go diagonal to the bottom, and that's my ninth one. So I have my nine capital Ys. Now I'm gonna start my lowercase y, my happy face here, and it's gonna be the same exact thing, only it's going to go under the line. So let me explain this. You're gonna start at the happy face, and you're gonna go down to the bottom line, and lift your pencil. You're going to go a little bit over back up to the top and you're going to go diagonal, but you're going to keep going. This is one of those letters, one of those few letters that we have that goes under the bottom line. So let me do that again. Let me show that to you again. We're going to go diagonal to the bottom, lift our pen, and go diagonal underneath. Now sometimes people like to put 
a curve at the bottom, and I'm okay with that. Either way, straight or with a curve, you have to go underneath the bottom line. So I have one, two, three, four, five. I think I can fit six right here. Oh, I got six in. Halfway, all the way down, there's seven. Halfway, all the way down, there's eight. Halfway, all the way down, there's nine. So we're making the same letter. We're just moving it down. All right, so good luck practicing your Y's. And since it is the beginning of the week, we are going to have some Y objects. My son is going to bring me some and we will add them to the list. The first thing we have is yarn. Let me add the yarn. I found some yarn and it's uh, what we use for the bumblebee. The next thing we have is one of my son's favorite thing to eat, yogurt. I think he likes it because it has M&Ms on top. Then we have, oh, if you look at this, what is that? That's an egg. Egg doesn't begin with Y, 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 Y. Hmm, what's that little round thing in the middle, that yellow thing? Oh, we'll get to that in a second. It is a yolk. Yolk. And then we're gonna get to the color of that yolk. I have a bottle of paint that is a color. What color is this, guys? It is yellow yellow. So we've got some good y y words. I'm going to show you this one. It's really big. So I'm going to show it to you. I'm going to slide it past you. This is what we call a yard stick because it's super long and it helps you measure large distances like a yard. Yard stick. Now I don't have one, but I can draw one. We've all seen these. You guys play with them, they spin in circles. We call those a uh, yo-yo. I wish I had one, I looked for one this morning. Um, let's see, oh, and one more thing that we have. This is a calendar, k -k calendar. Miss Mary, a calendar does not begin with y, y, y. Well, it doesn't, but in a calendar, we have all the months for one year. So this was my way of showing a year. So I'm gonna put down year. Now I know we have a lot more y, y, y words. I hope you can find them during the week. Okay, so super, prep, super preppies, remember mom and dad are going to write down what you say and you're going to put the end, love, and your name. I'm going to write to Miss Doe today from Mabel Payne Elementary. She's the one I get all my information from and she's the one that I work with the most, but I like all of our Preppy K teachers. Remember, today you should include some reasons why you appreciate your teacher or think your teacher is pretty cool. So I'm going to start with Dear Miss Doe, hmm, how are you this week? I'll start with a question. A lot of times it's good to open up your, your letter with a question. Here's an easy one, I miss you. Now, I have to think of some reasons why I appreciate her. You make learning fun. I like doing go noodles with you. I love listening to your stories. Uh, let's see, what else does Miss Doe do? Oh, wait, I have to write these down. I like doing go noodle with you. I love listening to 
to your stories. And let's see. Oh, you know what else I love? She has Pooh Bear. She sends Pooh Bear home with kids. I better ask her how Pooh Bear is doing. How is Pooh Bear? Because I know Pooh Bear is in class right now. I hope he's okay. Oh, and since that's a question, I have to put a question mark. All right, I think I'm good with, with this. I'm going to end my letter with love. Preppies, this is your part. L-O-V-E and your name. And now I have to write, draw a picture that matches my letter. I think I am going to... I think I'm going to draw Miss Doe reading a story. Okay, so I need a circle for her face. Okay, and I know Miss Doe has really cool, straight, long, black hair. So I'm going to put some long black hair here. There we go. Miss Doe always has a smile on her face. So let me put a really big smile. And I think she has really pretty brown eyes. So I'm going to give her some brown eyes. I'm going to take my black crayon and give her a little nose. All right, so I have to show Miss Joe reading a story. Let's put her in a, let's see, I think she'll wear a t-shirt in this dress, or in, in this picture. And I'm going to have one of her hands coming out here with a book in it. So there's her hand, and I'm going to draw a book which is two squares. Hmm, let's see, I gotta make her shirt a little bigger. It's gotta go all the way down to her tummy. And I have to show her other hand. We can't have just one hand, so I'll have another hand coming out here. And this hand is just gonna be right there while she reads her story. Um, I'm going to give Miss Doe, hmm, I think I will give her Blue jeans. Today she gets to wear blue jeans. So I'm going to have her sitting down. You know, she likes to sit in her chair while we're on the carpet. So I'm going to have her sitting down in her chair. I probably should draw her chair. Otherwise it looks like she's just floating. So here's her chair. And I'll color it in later. There's her chair. And it's got the legs. There we go. Oh, Miss Doe does not have any shoes on. Oh my goodness. I better put some shoes on her, which are just a couple ovals. Now, uh, let's see. I will draw a picture of, um, what's a good book Miss Doe reads? She has a book that she reads, uh, I think, in Halloween, and it's the Scary Monster book. You guys know that one with the eyes and the spiky hair and the silly wiggly nose and the goofy smile. And I even think it, the scary monster has horns. I'm not sure, I think it does. I love reading that book and I love when Miss Doe reads it. So I'm gonna put up the silly scary monster book up there for her to read. So make sure you write a good letter to your teacher explaining why you like coming to school and why you like them. Make them feel happy, make them feel special today. And try to do that all this week. Okay, so Monday we wrote our letter to our teacher, which means I'm gonna keep calendar really short. We do know that we've started a new month because on Friday we had the very first day of that month. Do you remember what month it is? We have the mmm sound, and when the A and Y work together, they make an A sound. The Y is silent. You don't hear a Y. So we have mmm, A, May. It's the month of May. Now, over the weekend, I added a few new numbers. I added two and three, so our pattern is changing. Let's see if you can guess what it's going to be. We have a daisy and then a tulip and a tulip. Well, I wonder what the pattern's going to be today. I don't know that, that, do you have a guess? Oh, you think it's gonna be a daisy? Oh, you think it's gonna be a tulip? 
Well, I have news for you. Today it's a bluebell. Wait a minute. I don't think we have enough information to get our pattern yet. But let's look. We have Daisy Tulip Tulip Bluebell. Well, that's a pretty complicated pattern. Maybe we'll know what the pattern is tomorrow. We'll have to wait and see. So today is the fourth. And let's see if you guys can count with me. It's going to be super easy to count because we only have a few numbers. One, two, three, four. That's it. Okay, we'll do more with calendar tomorrow, but that's it for calendar today. So in May, we started a whole new author. We did Eric Carley before and we had some really good books, but our author this month for the month of May is Mo Wellems. Mo Wellems did the Pigeon books, the Nuffle Bunny books, and the Elephant and Piggy books. So today we're going to start with a good pigeon book. I know you guys have probably all seen this, but it's such a good book and good books are worth hearing more than once. I would like to say thank you to both of my neighbors. I had two neighbors that lent me some books. So if you were one of the ones that lent me a Mo Wellams book, thank you so much. All right, don't let the pigeon drive the bus. Hmm. Don't let the pigeon drive the bus. <gasps> Look at Pigeon. He's dreaming. I know he's dreaming because of these bubbles. What is he dreaming about? Oh, he's dreaming about driving the bus. Hmm. Hi, I'm the bus driver. Listen, I've got to leave for a little while. So can you watch things for me until I get back? Thanks. And oh, remember, don't let the pigeon drive the bus. Oh, he was pretty sure about that. Look, he has an exclamation point and he wrote in really big letters. So it's like he's telling us really firmly. You think we can do it? Okay, we won't let him drive the bus. There goes the bus driver. Oh, and there's Pigeon. Pigeon is watching the bus driver leave. Let's see what happens. He'd never leave. Hey, can I drive the bus? What do we say to him? Please. I'll be careful. What do we say to him? I'll tell you what. I'll just steer. My cousin Herb drives a bus almost every day. What do we say to him? True story. Oh, Pigeon does not look happy. I think he heard us say no. Oh, sorry, Pigeon. I really am. Vroom, vroom, vroomity, vroom, vroom. Pigeon at the wheel. Oh my goodness. He looks really happy imagining driving the bus. No. I never get to do anything. Oh, Pigeon, I'm sure you get to do a lot of things. You just don't get to drive the bus today. Hey, I've got an idea. Let's play. Drive the bus. I'll go first. What do we say? No. Come on. Just once around the block. I'll be your best friend. How about I give you five bucks? No fair. I bet your mom would let me. I don't think so. Mom, say no. What's the big deal? It's just a bus. I have dreams, you know. Fine. Let me drive the bus. Oh my goodness. Should we let him? No. Oh, Pigeon looks so sad. Should we let him drive the bus? No. I'm back. You didn't let the Pigeon drive the bus, did you? No. Great, thanks a lot. Uh-oh. What do my Pigeon said, uh-oh? Bye. Oh, Pigeon, you look so, so sad. Hey! Oh wow, what's that? 
Oh, now Pigeon's dreaming of driving something else. That looks like a shiny red truck. Do you think Pigeon wants to drive the truck now? Should we let him? That's right, no. We're gonna be reading a lot of Mo Wellam stories in the month of May and hopefully some other stories too. I hope you enjoy Mo Wellams. Okay, so it's now math time and it's time for us to practice our number nine. Ooh, we introduced nine last week, but I remember on Friday we did a number review. We did one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So today we're gonna start nine. Now, let me get my happy face up here. Our nine is gonna begin on the right side. We're going to start with around like the letter C, and then we're gonna go up and down. Let me show that to you again. We're gonna go around like the letter C. You see how we stop at the dotted line? Then we're gonna go up and down. We don't lift our pencil with this. Around, up, and down. 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 We don't do the down first and then raise our, our pen and do a, a circle on the top because that ends up looking like the letter Q. So we want to start at the top and go around, up and down, all the way down to the bottom, around to the halfway point, up and down. Now I should do nine nines because we're in the month of nine. Let's see how many I have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I did nine nines, but I want to warn you, you don't want your around to be super small. Sometimes it's easy to go like this, but then you're not going down to the halfway point, and these are not really good nines, and you don't want them to be skinny either. So let's say I go down like this. It's getting kind of skinny. We want it to be a nice big around like the letter C, up and down. So you want to avoid these, and you definitely don't want this. No nines that hang up in the air. No balloon letters or numbers. So guys, just remember, around like the letter C, up and down, and you'll have really good nines. Now, the next thing we have to do is in the weekly happenings, your teachers said that we should gallop around the, horse, around the house. So we're gonna gallop like a horse around the house. My goodness, and they want us to do it nine times. Well, I'm not gonna be able to show you all nine times, but my cameraman is gonna move the camera back a little bit into the kitchen. And I'm gonna stand right here and I'm gonna tell you this is kinda of cool in my house. You put it down. Because in my house, I can go out into the front room over here and I can go around where this wall is back to the front door and come right back here. So I've got my own little racetrack right here. So I'm gonna gallop. I'm only gonna gallop one time. You guys are gonna to have to gallop nine times. Are you ready? Now the cameraman's gonna stay here and I'm gonna gallop and I'll come back from over there. So here I go, you guys ready? One, two, three. And I'm back! I did my galloping. Now if I'm gonna do what the weekly happenings are, I'm gonna to have to do this nine times. I'm gonna let you guys do that. Have fun with galloping. So today we are going to make, since we just read a pigeon book not too long ago, I figured we would make our own pigeon. Now moms and dads, some of this comes down to some of the perspectives, some of the measurements come down to just guess and check, um, like the size of the beak, the size of the eyeball. It's not something you can really just have your kids cut out. So I would suggest that you watch the video moms and dads. Um, try it out with your kids. Try a few different size circles for the eyes. Um, I know when I first made the beak it was too small and I had to make it over again. Um, but just, you know, have them do it more than once until it looks the way you want it to be or just accept that what your kids do is what they do and that's awesome too. So in order to make the pigeon, we need a piece of blue construction paper and if you don't have blue, there's nothing wrong with taking a white sheet of paper and painting it blue, letting it dry and then using that. 
Now, you could use other colors of construction paper. You could use black and yellow for the eyeball and the beak, or you can do what I ended up doing, which was just using a black and yellow marker. Even though I have those construction papers, you're cutting out such a small amount that I just decided I would color on a white piece of paper and use those. You'll need glue and scissors, and you'll need a pencil. So the first thing we're going to do, preppies, you know how to do this. You're gonna put your hand on the paper. Now you want, you can put your fingers together like this, or you can put your fingers out like this, um, or you can do it like somewhere in the middle, which is what I did. I think this time I'm going to do mine with my fingers closed. If you have someone that's not a super duper good cutter, this would be a good pose to do because then they're not cutting between the fingers. But if you want them to do the extra practice, by all means, have them open up their fingers. So we're going to go around each finger. I'll leave that one open for a little bit of cutting practice. Okay, I kind of did it half and half. <laughs> my, my ring is a little bump here and it's going to look kind of silly because some of them are open and some of them are closed, but that's okay. Super preppies, you then have to cut out your hand. Remember, your left hand is the one that holds the paper and turns the paper, and your right hand is the one that makes the baby bites, baby bites, all the way around. Oh, I've got to turn it with my left hand. Baby bites, baby bites, baby bites, all the way around the top. Baby bites, baby bites, baby bites, baby bites. Turning it with my left hand. Baby bites, baby bites. Oh, Miss Mary did not get perfectly on the line. Is that okay? Yes, it is. Now, I got my bird body. For the next one, parents, you're gonna to wanna to draw a line for the kids to practice, and this is where you kinda of have to size it out. Their hands are a lot smaller than mine, so the neck may be a lot thinner than mine, but you're gonna to wanna to draw out a rectangle, and it can be pretty long because you can always trim it later, and have your Preppy K kids cut out the rectangle. So super preppies, let's start cutting. Baby bites, baby bites, baby bites. Oh, went too far. Baby bite. This is going to become the neck of your pigeon. Now, if I put the end of it right here, oh my goodness, that is a very long neck. But you can always put the neck farther down, farther down, until you find a height that you're comfortable with. I'm pretty comfortable with that. Now, I need to cut out a circle for the pigeon's head. I'm gonna draw a circle, and you certainly can use uh, an object to make a more perfect circle. You can see mine is not perfect. And then, preppy cares, I need you to cut out the circle. We're doing a lot of turning here. Baby bites, baby bites, baby bites. And turn, turn, turn. Baby bites, baby bites, baby bite. Oh, got it. Now this certainly is not a perfect circle, super preppies. We know that it's more like an oval, but it's fine. And I'm gonna put it here on the head, or on the top of the neck. And you can decide, it can be a little higher, it can be a little lower, it can be wherever you feel is a good position for the head. Now we're done with our blue paper, so I'm going to put that off to the side. We're going to take out our yellow paper, or our white paper, and on this, you'll see Pigeon has a white stripe for his neck. To do that, I cut out a long rectangle, way longer than it needed to be across the neck in a little bit but you'll see why so super preppies cut out your rectangle now you can see it goes way past the neck but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold that over in a minute so here let me show you I'm going to tuck it in here and tuck it in here and then when you put the head back on it looks pretty good we've got the good beginnings of the pigeon now I need an eyeball, and it has to be smaller than the circle I did before. So here's what I suggest. If you're not sure, put your old paper on top that you cut the head out with, and use that as a guide to make your circle the, uh, approximately the right size. So now, Super Preppies, I need you to cut out Pigeon's eyeball. Baby bites, baby bites, baby bites. Baby bites, baby bites, baby bites, turning, 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 and there we go. I'm gonna put that down there. Hey, that's not looking too bad for our first guess. 
here's where we start to need the markers. So I need to make a pigeon beak. I'm going to go like this and I'm going to color a big piece of my white paper yellow. Way too big. Because it's better to do this and have extra stuff that you throw away than to cut out your beak and have little edges that are still white. Okay, so I have drawn a really big section here and I'm going to go over with a pencil. Now it's kind of cool. It's a straight line and a long straight line and then just a curve any way you want. If you're not happy with the size of that after you cut it out, after your, after your preppy cuts it out, you can always trim it yourself, parents. So preppies, I need you to cut out the beak. Here we go. Baby, but oh, there goes my beak, it fell down. Let's see how this beak looks. Huh, and actually, I'm really happy with that. It's, it's looking pretty good. Just remember, the first time I did this, I did not get these measurements exactly correct. When I made this one, I had to try several times. So just keep trying until you have what you want. Now, I'm happy stopping here because what I'm going to do is, I'm going to say, parents, you can put a big circle here and like, like, like this, and then you can have your Preppy K kids color it in. So Preppies, this is what I, why I'm always saying no scribble scrabble, you can do this. Little tiny colorings and fill in the pigeon eyeball. Go around the edge and you should be good. Now it is to, oh, you know what I forgot? Our pigeon that we're doing has no legs. So let's get out the white paper again. And remember what I did here with the yellow marker? We're gonna do that again with the black marker. Now to make this easy to cut, I'm gonna use the, can you move, is it in the screen? I'm gonna use the edge of the paper here and I'm just going to draw it black. Put the old blue paper underneath so I don't mark up my, table. Okay, I colored it in pretty good. Now, I made the legs super long. You guys can see on the back here, they were super long because that way I could decide how big I wanted them to be on my pigeon. So I'm going to make these super long and what you're going to do is you are going to have your, you're going to draw a line. Hopefully your preppies can see it. And then you're going to draw another line in between, and those are your two legs. So, super preppies, I need you to cut out your pigeon legs. I know this is a lot of prep, moms and dads. This is what your teachers are doing, and this is what your parent volunteers are doing when they're in class. They're making all these things ready, so your kids just have to cut, glue, and assemble those wonderful projects that they send home all the time with you guys. Okay, so now I have my legs, and now I am ready. Now, if you look in the book, you'll notice that Pigeon does not have super long legs. Oh, and he's got these extra toes, too. Maybe we should put those on. I don't know. We'll see. So I'm going to take these legs. I know my legs are kind of long, so I'm just going to roll them up underneath until I have them the way I want them. I'm thinking that's looking good. Once your Pigeon is looking ready, super preppies, you are going to have to work on gluing everything together. So let's just start with the head first because there's a lot to glue down on this. Let's get our glue bottle, open it up, and remember what we always tell you, dot, dot, not a lot. So Miss Mary's gonna put a little dot on the eye and put it down. Now while the glue is still, still around, you can move it and see which place you like it. I kinda liked it in the middle, it's up to you. And for the beak super preppies, dot, dot, not a lot. So I got a little bit of glue on here. I'm going to put it down. And once again, I'm going to move the beak around until I find just where I want it. And we're looking good. Now on the neck, we had this piece of paper that we folded over. Let's see if we can glue that down super preppies. So we're going to pull this back and put a dot. And we're going to pull this back and put a dot. And now when we flip it over, our neck is looking pretty good. We've done the head, we've done the neck. Let's work on the body. We're going to turn your feathers over and turn your legs over. 
and we're going to put a little bit of glue. I kind of rubbed it there. Oh, and we're going to put it down with the black side down because then it will show up on the other side. And let's see how our body looks. Not bad. So now we have most of the pieces of the pigeon. We just need to glue them all together. So let's see. I'm going to put on the front of my neck, at the bottom, I'm going to put a dot, dot, not a lot. And I'm going to put that behind the pigeon. Okay. And then at the top of the neck, dot, dot, not a lot. I'm going to put a little bit of glue and I'm going to put the head on top. Pigeon's looking almost ready. Now I notice in the book, Pigeon has a really nice big wing. So let's see, Super Preppies, if we can draw a curve and a straight line on your hand, just like on Pigeon. So let's try this a curve and a straight line. Okay, our pigeon is looking pretty good. So guys, I hope you're able to go through all these steps and make a really cool pigeon. I'm going to tell you the difference between this pigeon and this pigeon is that parents, I went back and I outlined all the pieces in black. To me, that's just what a cartoon looks like when it's outlined in black. You can do it this way and leave it this way. It's perfectly fine. You can add the black border later if you want. That's perfectly fine. Just a little hint to save your sanity. If you are choosing to outline everything like this, you're going to want a piece of paper behind it so that the mark gets half on the pigeon and half on the paper and you don't get it everywhere. So yeah, just, uh, and then you can move this around. So, yeah, that one doesn't have a very big outline, so I can put that on there. So you can just use this paper for scrap to help put the outline on. And that's something moms and dads can do later. I hope you guys enjoyed Pigeon. Now, there is one more thing I have to do with my day. And that is I have to tell you the website of the day. So it's actually a website we've already posted on this site. I'm going to take you over to our really cool list of websites you can check out. And on the very third day that I made a video, I mentioned you can go to kennedy-center.org backsplash back, backspace education backspace mo hyphen wellums. That's a big mouthful, but if you do go there, you will find that this entire time, these last 30 days that Mo Wellams has been doing art with the kids. He's been breaking down how to draw his characters and how to draw other characters, how to get ideas for characters if they want to be illustrators. These videos are amazing. I heavily suggest you check out the Kennedy Center, KennedyCenter.org Mo Willems spot to get some ideas on how to draw with kids. That's the end for today. Happy Monday. Don't forget your teacher appreciation letters. Let's get them all back to the teachers and I'll see you tomorrow.